hello friends welcome again to gilu so this is going to be the last part of exercise 4.6 i'll be discussing here we don't have to find the consistency rather we need to solve the system of equation by using the matrix method now all the problems are of similar nature hence i'll be solving just a few problems because all other is just a follow up with change in numbers that's all now uh, starting with question number 7 so the given system of equations can be written in the form of ax is equal to b <coughs> where in this case a is is equal to 5 2 7 3 and capital x is is equal to x y and b is equal to 4 5 all right <coughs> now just in the same way we need to find determinant of a so determinant of a is equal to 15 minus 14 as you can see which is equal to 1 and it is not equal to 0 hence therefore a is non singular so its inverse exists inverse exists all right so now since inverse exists we got to find a inverse now a inverse is equal to 1 by determinant of a times adjoint of a now since we know determinant of a is equal to 1 it does not matter so inverse will be equal to adjoint of a adjoint of a we can directly find it out it is 3 minus 2 minus 7 5 <coughs> and since we have written ax is equal to b so obviously x is equal to a inverse b by pre multiplying both sides with a inverse all right that is what we are going to make use of now so x is equal to a inverse b which is equal to 3 minus 2 minus 7 5 times 4 5 that is b and it comfortably gives us 12 minus 10 minus 28 plus 25 so therefore the matrix x means xy that is equal to 2 minus 3 so therefore x is equal to 2 y is equal to minus 3 so in the same way you need to proceed with question number 8 9 and 10 question number 8 9 and 10 are exactly the same there is no difference except change in numbers now question number 11 is also in the same way it needs to be done in the same way but uh, for your sake of convenience let me deal with just question number 11 this this set of equations how to deal with it let's see question number 11 just if it is replaced by three variables there is no change in the process process remains the same but here it will be a bit lengthier because it is a third order matrix so one second we are writing the same thing so it can be written in the form of x is equal to b where a is equal to as we can see the coefficient matrix it is 2 1 1 1 minus 2 minus 1 0 3 5 All right, x is equal to x, y, and z. Finally, b is equal to one, three by two, and nine. Now, first we need to check for the singularity of a. That is, determinant of a is equal to two times ten plus three minus one times minus five minus three plus zero. I am taking column one. So that is equal to thirty-four, which is not equal to zero. So therefore, we can state that. a is non singular hence its inverse exists all right now since its inverse exists we got to find its inverse that is the transpose of cofactor matrix so we need to find the corresponding cofactors and you can easily find it out i am just writing out all right now since you have written it you can also write a inverse in the very same way which is equal to 1 by determinant of a times adjoint of a in the same process see if you look at there is no difference in question number 1 or question number 4 it is just the same way now the transpose of cofactor matrix will be looking like this all right now x we got to find x and x will be nothing but a inverse b so that is equal to 
1 by 34 times 13 is 1 5 minus 10 3 3 minus 6 minus 5 times 1 3 by 2 9 that's 1 3 by 2 and 9 now therefore x is x y and z obviously just here is an increment of one variable and if you solve this you will be getting it as 1 by 34 times 34 17 minus 51 that is going to give you 1 1 by 2 and minus 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2 so actually x y z you are going to get 1 1 by 2 minus 3 by 2 so therefore x is equal to 1 y is equal to half and z equal to minus 3 by 2 so actually we did question number 11 so actually question number 12 13 and 14 is just the follow-up of the same type of question and also let me come to question number 15 now so if you can see that question number 15 is once again the same question but just the pattern is reversed here you are given a matrix and you need to find a inverse and using a inverse you need to solve the system of equations if you look carefully the matrix a is nothing but the coefficient matrix that is already given so you are already given the coefficient matrix here and using this you need to solve actually it's easier than question number 11 12 13 14 so question number 15 is once again the follow-up of the same category of questions so i won't be wasting any further time discussing it now we'll be coming to the last question of this exercise that is question number 16 which is a word problem by itself so question number 16 is once again a very easy question here we are given the cost of 4 kg onion 3 kg wheat 2 kg rice is rupees 60 and the cost of 2 kg onion 4 kg wheat and 6 kg rice is rupees 90 the cost of 6 kg onion 2 kg wheat and 3 kg rice is rupees 70 so find the cost of each item per kg we need to use the matrix method so here it can be clearly seen that we are given three statements actually there are three variables the cost of onion wheat and rice per kg and hence there are three statements that are given which can be used to form three equations and since we have three variables three equations we can easily solve it but here we need to solve it by the matrix method once again it is the same but let's look at it so question number 16 let the cost of onion per kg be rupees x in the same way let the cost of wheat per kg be rupees y and in the same way let the cost of rice per kg be rupees z as you can clearly see three equations are given so let us form the equation hence the problem can be written as 4x plus 3y plus 2z is equal to 60 from the first statement if 1 kg of onion costs rupees 4 so x since the cost of onion per kg is rupees x we can get 4x to be the cost of 4 kg of onion so in this way from the second statement 2 kg onion 4 kg wheat and 6 kg of rice is equal to 90 the cost of 6 kg of onion 2 kg of wheat and 3 kg of rice is equal to 70 so in the same way we are we are going to form the equation the system of equation can be written in the form of a x is equal to b now a as you can clearly see it is the coefficient matrix x is equal to x y z variable matrix and p is equal to the constant matrix Alright, so determinant of A is equal to 4 times 12 minus 12. You can find it out very easily. Plus 2 times. I am using the first row for this. 24 that is equal to 50 which is not equal to 0. So since determinant of A is not equal to 0, it is a non-singular matrix and hence solution will exist. It is consistent. So for the solution to exist, we need to find A inverse. 
and for a inverse we need to find adjoint of a and for adjoint of a we need to find the cofactors so let's start now a11 is equal to 0 where a is the cofactors 30 a13 is equal to minus 20 similarly all right so adjoint of a that is equal to the transpose of cofactor matrix that is 0 minus 5 10. okay so a inverse is equal to 1 by 50 times adjoint of a that is 0 minus 5 10 all right now as we clearly know that x is equal to a inverse b so that implies x y z is equal to a inverse b which is 60 90 70 if you solve it you will be getting 1 by 50 times 250 400 and 400 that will be equal to 5 8 8 so you can clearly see that x is equal to 5 y is equal to 8 z equal to 8 so very easily you can say it you can conclude that cost of onion per kg is equal to rupees 5 cost of wheat per kg is equal to rupees 8 and cost of rice per kg is also equal to rupees 8 and that was it exercise 4.6 as easy as a cake work still if you have any kind of problem please feel free to use the comment section let me know obviously i will positively try to respond my best so this concludes exercise 4.6 and i'll be meeting you in the next video with the last exercise that is the miscellaneous set of problems thank you very much for watching this video